Hello again, YouTube. Just got done. Just got done talking about selling England by the pound by Genesis. Might be aware of him. Um. So. Um. On this video, we're going to be talking about the big one. The indeed the big one. The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. It's the double album. Clocking in at 94 minutes. 94 and a half. Something like that. Uh, but it doesn't seem like 94 minutes. So that's a good thing. Uh, yeah, I think this is Tony Banks' least favorite. Well, I mean, a lot of suffering goes into masterpieces. Which I think... This is, I said Supper's Ready was the song-wise the peak of their career, and I said Selling England by the Pound is probably the most balanced, cohesive, fair album they did. You get a lot from everybody. But I think album-wise, this is truly the peak of their career. Definitely not one to start with, though. You'll be scratching your head and might be, you might run off and never want to, never want to be terror, terrorized by the monsters that are Genesis again, but, but I mean this, it's, it's if if you like the wall and you know the wall, this is pretty much the wall, but a hard to understand version. You have to. A, a lot of listening and a lot of researching the lyrics and you know stuff like that has to go into hearing this one uh, of course you get you get uh, the short story on the gatefold might be a bit hard to understand but it, it gets a gives a broad overview of the album the content of the album. Yeah, it's uh, it's possibly the best double album that's ever been made. The best double concept album. Uh, so it starts with The Lamb Lies Down on Broadway. Uh, yeah, I really like that one. Great opening. Yeah, Genesis albums always have great opening tracks. The, like, they always pick. They always pick a good way to open their album. Uh, yeah, just about every album has a good opening track, except maybe, except maybe uh, one or two of them. Yeah, except maybe one album. We'll talk about that one. Uh, but yeah, great opening tune. Gets you, gets you pumped up, ready to hear the album. Fly on the windshield. Love that the bit that that after it's soft and then it the the the, the, bound out, the, the heavy bit that leads into Broadway melody of 1974. Love that track. Uh, yeah, epic moment of the album. Cuckoo cocoon, I like. Uh, and you get in the cage. You know, yeah, you really like that one too. Yeah. Great keyboard work. Uh, it's, it's just one of the epics of the album, I guess. It's clock set, what, about 8 minutes 15 or something. I think that's what the record label said. You can't always trust the record label. Sometimes they. They list the, the timing of a song that's completely off, but yeah, it's about eight minutes, a little over eight minutes, and it's a good track. And, oh, I love this one. The Grand Parade of Lifeless Packaging <laughs> rounds off side one. Yeah, completely bonkers. Love it. The beginning of side two, another one of my favorites. Back in, back in New York City. Yeah, I love that one. You know, Peter Gabriel's kind of... Screaming 
Uh, yeah, I love that track. Hairless Heart, really good instrumental. Not filler. That leads in, that flawlessly leads into Counting Out Time. <laughs> again, another one of my favorites. This, again, it's completely bonkers, and I, you know, I love it. And you gotta love that totally weird guitar solo. There's like, it's really distorted, real, really, really good track. One of the singles of the album. Then you get the other single, the Carpet Crawlers. Of course, that's a classic tune. Again, the great keyboard work. Uh, and it ends with The Chamber of 32 Doors, and kind of an overlooked track. Really good lyrics. Uh, you know, I'd rather trust a man, I'd, I'd rather trust a farm man than a, than a, what, a city man? I, I don't remember all my lyrics, but something like that. And I'd rather trust a man who works with his hands. You know, it's just really good, really good lyrics. Really good. I think the lyrics on this album are ahead of all the, just about all the lyrics they did before. You know, they're, they're not really talking much about fairy tale creatures and stuff like that on this. They're talking talk about real stuff here. It's like a sort of a journey, sort of a story, like a journey, some sort of journey, finding the meaning of life sort of thing. I think that's what it is. Yeah, you get, yeah, Chamber of 32 Doors, really love that one. Love how it ends the sec the first LP with the the ding the piano, and then on second record side three you get Lily White Lilith. Love this one. Nice rocking tune. Then you get the waiting room. People don't really like this one much, but I really do like it. I love the synthesizer. The the. <laughs> Oh, and the guitar, the, it's a complete plagiarism of uh, Lark's Tongues and Aspic, part one. You know, the, the, the violin going, dun, 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 and then Fripp goes, same exact thing, but, you know, fits with the song. And I don't like comparing bands to other bands, you know, but I'll give in and say, the last couple minutes does remind me of the 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 end of Shine On You Crazy Diamond with the the da, 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 the synthesizer bit, but this came out a year before. But I think that Shine On was written at the same time because they're they're Floyd were performing that in '74, and that's when this album was recorded. Uh, but anyway, just. To, yeah, I like the waiting room. Cool track. It's the band improvising. Then you get Anyway, which was originally a really old track from the Anthony Phillips days. And it kind of sounds like one of their old, something they would have done in, from Genesis to Revelation or Trespass. Um, I believe it's from 69 or 70. Um, I think 70, yeah. 69 or 70, and they, they, and they can turn it into a good song. Uh, before I heard it, I thought it was going to be like anyway, like some sort of filler interlude sort of thing, like anyway, but no, it really is, really is a good track. Uh, the Supernatural, oh God, uh, and uh, Anesthesia. And a seat, you know what I'm saying. That song. <laughs> that one's that one's good fun. The Lamia. That one's a good one about the the snake ladies. And then side three ends with silent sorrow and empty boats. Love that one. The the, <laughs> the guitar bit and the choir keyboard. It, love that. Oh yeah, and the Lamia is one of the longer songs too. It clocks in at about seven minutes. Uh, and then you get on side four, you get another. I think the I think the longest track, uh, the Colony of the Slipperman. 
that's about like eight minutes twenty, I think. Um, as the arrival, a visit to the doctor and the raven. This this one is probably my probably my favorite of the long tracks. Uh, yeah, I really like this one. It's really really cool. Of course, this one you really gotta sit down and read the lyrics to understand any of it, cause it's like a play. It's like different people saying different things, like a play. It's a. Uh, yeah, I really like that track. The well, the keyboard to. Um, you get ravine. Uh, it sigs way into ravine. The, from the ending riff of, ending synth riff of, of the Raven, and it seeds into Ravine, and the guitar. I love you know this this one. I really like the in, this instrumental. Uh, you, know, you get the atmospheric keyboard sound and the the wind sound, and the acoustic. The yeah, I really like that one. Then that, and that leads into the light lies down on Broadway, the slow version of the title track, kind of like how there's in the flesh and in the flesh on the wall. Yeah, this is a good track. Uh, you get riding the street. Uh, yeah, really, my favorite part is. I really like the the dun, 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 the riff at the beginning and but lyrically my favorite part one of my favorite parts of the whole album actually lyrically is uh the the evil can evil you got nothing on me yeah 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 it's one thing Gabriel does a lot of the weird voices on this he did it on um, Colony of the Slipperman like he talked like this sir. like he was being the, the Slipperman guy talking in that weird voice. Yeah, I like writing this read and in the Rapids, it's funny. In the Rapids has some of the most lyrics of all the songs, but it's one of the shortest. It, it's like a little under two and a half minutes, I think. Yeah, I love that track, and it ends with it. Great, great closer. It it ends doesn't end with a whimper. Um it ends with a ends upbeat. This one you also kind of have to read the lyrics to fully get it. To fully get it. Get it. See what I did there? Um, yeah, I think my favorite part lyrically of the song and one of my favorite lyrics of the whole album is it's real. It, no, it's here. It's now it's real, it's real, and I forgot to mention, this is a, the, the main character of our story is, is his name's Rail, R you know, real, but it's R-A-E-L, um, yeah, I love that bit, it's real, it's real, it's, I know it's only knock and know all, but I like it, right, right, right closing statement from Gabriel for Genesis, if honestly, if Gabriel would would have stayed in the band, I don't know how they would have followed this up. Uh, it surely wouldn't have been nearly as good as this. They would have started going downhill, I think. I mean, I, I it wouldn't it wouldn't have been bad at all, but I it wouldn't be as good as this. I mean, it, like I said, this is probably the album wise the peak of their career. There's a lot of focus on lyrics on this album, like on "Selling Little by the Pound." There was there was more room for instrumentation. This one has a lot of lyrics on it, uh, but there's still a bit of room for, you know, instrumentation room on here. Um, um yeah, uh, but. Yeah, you get a lot of Banks, of course. He's the lead 
you, he's pretty much the leader. You get a lot of banks on here. You get a bit of Hackett, not nearly as much as the previous couple albums. You get some good bass playing by Rutherford, and you get some fantastic drumming by Phil Collins. And you get some of Gabriel's best lyrics, arguably his, his best lyrics. This is by the peak of his lyric writing career. Don't know what if he'd agree with me on that, but for me, this is... Um, I mean, I, it's lyrically their best album. Uh, definitely. Uh, might take a bit to under a bit of time to understand it, but it's not for the beginner. Uh, like I said, don't like don't listen to this first. It's not a good start. To, I mean. Yeah, it's not the good album to l listen to first. After a few albums, you'll be ready for this. I always said The Wall is beginner level and Tommy and all that, but this this is expert level. Um, but, yeah, uh, I mean, what else am I going to write this besides... Uh, Let's see. Ooh, there's a lot. There's a lot of stuff I can... A lot of... I'll give it... It... Get it? Get it? I'll give it five... Lambs, five hairless hearts, five slippermen out of five. Yeah, that's five out of five. Um, yeah, this is the end of the Gabriel era. Great way to end. Perfect ending to a great era. Anyway, next is Trick of the Tail. Uh, yeah, that might that'll be an interesting video. Um, but yeah, this, this has been the Lamb Lies Down on Broadway re review, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye.